In other news, Israel's second ever astronaut, Eitan Stibi, together with the Israel Space Agency, the Ramon Foundation, and the Ministry of Science and Technology, have finally announced which experiment proposals made the cut to go with Stibi into the great unknown. Stibi is set to take off uh, for the International Space Station February 2022. And here to give us all the details, aerospace correspondent with SeaTech by Calcalist, Yafit Ovadia. Yafit, it is a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me on, Iran. It's my pleasure. So first of all, uh, what can you tell us about the global uh, milestones, rather, the Israeli milestones mm -hmm. uh, with the space industry or space agency economy? What, what's, mm -hmm. what's going on? Well, first of all, Israel has registered uh, two quite impressive uh, missions, upcoming missions in space. We have uh, the second astronaut, as you mentioned before, Eitan Stiva. He's going to be launching to the International Space Station in January 2022, or now it's pushed off to February, I mm. believe so. And also the second Bereshit spacecraft, Israel's second lunar mission, which is slated for 2024. Um, as for the economy, um, $25.6 billion was invested in space tech companies overall in 2020 last year. But in Israeli companies in particular, $70 million has gone into funding um, Israeli space technologies, which is quite impressive. That's incredible. So can, what can you tell me about uh, Eitan Stivi, though? Because I know mm -hmm. he's our second Israeli astronaut after mm -hmm. the tragic death of Ilan Ramon. Mm -hmm. what, why was he chosen? He was chosen because he is a central factor. He is a very important person in the Israeli space tech ecosystem. He has a very impressive career behind him, too. Uh, previously, he served in the Israeli Air Force as a combat pilot. Um, he also is the head of his own venture capital investment firm, Vital Capital, and he helped co-found the Ramon Foundation. And he's also a former colleague of Elon, so he knew him personally, which was something that helped influence and inspire him to choose this mission. Wow. So he really, I mean, he's really been in it yes. from the very beginning. Yes. It sounds not, not random by any means. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So I want to talk about now the 44 different experiments, mm -hmm. six different categories, ranging from astrophysics and optics to agriculture and renewable energy. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about some of these experiments? Well, originally, the call for proposals was supposed to be anywhere between 15 and 20, and that just kind of boomed to 44. Because we have so many things we, we want to We have so explore. many things we want to offer, right. which is, I mean, we are the startup nation after all. Um, I can tell you that yesterday at the conference, um, they unveiled some of those uh, exciting technologies. I got to see a few of them up close. So one is a drone that's going to function as sort of a personal assistant to astronauts on board. It floats around inside the station. It's quite a cramped cool. space. Um, and it can help direct them, photograph items, uh, provide ground conditions on Earth. Um, and that's being developed by uh, scientists at Tel Aviv University, along with um, researchers at Israel Aerospace Industries and the Yerucham Science Center. And um, there's other cool technologies like flexible solar panels, um, research being conducted in medicine, studying Alzheimer's disease, uh, the effects of chemotherapy on child leukemia. Those are just a few of the impressive uh, feats that Israel is going to do. All right, well, this is an incredible time to watch Israeli space exploration. Yafit Ovadia from SeaTech Kalkalis, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me.